There you go. Now I can see some people too. Well, welcome everybody. Um, we're excited. I'm excited to um, do another really fun cooking class uh, through the um, Chester Chesterfield County Library Foundation. Um, so tonight's class, um, which is live from my personal kitchen, um, I completely forgot when we started doing our hands-on in-person classes that um, Thursday nights are when the chef is, is down there, Chef Lawrence, who um, I'm really excited is back in Richmond. So September, we started our in-person cooking classes. Um, we do require that everyone is fully vaccinated. Um, we've lowered our guest count from 16 to 12 so that there's a little bit more distance, uh, but we're excited to have people back down there. So tonight he's actually teaching um, an herbs class all about herbs. So he has some fantastic herbs that they're all gonna work with. Um, so tonight, yes, you're in, you're in my kitchen, which is not as lovely as my kitchen downtown is my work kitchen. But we are doing, you know, school is back in session. Some people are going back to work um, now. So um, tonight's recipes are things that you can easily make ahead. The salad in a jar is, is delicious. Um, you know, this um, chicken curry salad, I love. It's one of my favorites. And it's very similar. Before I moved to Richmond, I lived in New York City and I was there for about 10 years uh, before I moved here. And at all of the little markets, the convenience stores, the markets, many of them had big hot bars. So you would just go there for lunch. I worked right in Midtown. And so, you know, you would go there for lunch and, and you could either order from the deli, you could get like a great, you know, egg on a roll with cheese. Um, but they always had this special, you know, curry, the special chicken salad. And they also had a special tuna salad, which was very much the same. And so it's a little bit of that sweet and savory. There's a little bit of spice from the curry, but it's not overpowering. So, you know, we'll go through all of those things. Now, if any of you are new to um, our classes, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions that you have throughout um, today's class. Uh, everybody got the recipes, the ingredient list, as well as the agenda, um, so that you'll know what order we're making everything in. Um, and a lot of these things, you know, can be adjusted. So certainly ask me if there are, um, if I know of any substitutes when you're making this um, dish. One thing, if you are cooking along, you'll wanna make sure that your oven's on 350. The first dish that we are going to make um, are the raspberry crumb bars. So you do wanna make sure that your oven's on 350 and that you have um, a parchment lined uh, nine by 13 pan. So whether it's metal or glass, if you don't have parchment, you can just spray it with some non-stick spray. I will, I will tell you um, that when you are in a pitch and you are at the mall and you realize that you don't have, you don't have time to go to the grocery store and you don't have any parchment and you just don't want to go to a million different stores. So I go into Williams Sonoma, which I kind of knew. I was like, oh, this is going to cost me a lot of money. So. Um, I was desperate and I went into Williams Sonoma and I knew they had parchment paper, which they only have parchment rounds. Um, I will tell you, it is $15 for a box of, <laughs> I almost cried. I was like, you know, they're, don't I get like a gift with this or something? But um, yeah, $15 for parchment rounds. So I am, I'm fashioning my, my paper. So <laughs> if you can avoid, but, not that I don't, I love the products in Williams Sonoma, but $15 for parchment paper is quite a lot of money. It's like three times what you pay in the grocery store. Um, so yeah, that was, you know, shame on me for not um, having my mise en place and not preparing as I should. So for those of you, again, who may be new, who do not know um, about myself or about mise en place, um, my name is Christine and I am the chef and owner of Mise en Place Culinary Center that's located right down in Chaco Slip. I'm right there in the circle by the Martin Agency about a block from the tobacco company restaurant. And we've been offering 
um, virtual and in-person um, cooking classes, both for individuals as well as corporate events and private events. Uh, we just started in September, you know, uh, offering our in-person cooking classes. And this is my 17th year. So um, it certainly has been a crazy past couple of years, but um, we're really excited to welcome people back in. Um, but we're going to continue our Zoom classes as well. So because we were able to reach literally around the world, people around the world to take our classes, we decided, hey, you know, why, why stop doing the Zoom classes when now we have a whole new group of people that can cook along with us that weren't able to before. So we do still offer those. Our October schedule um, will be online first thing next week. Um, so we have some great classes. We have um, a knife skills class. We have another pasta class, um, which is going to be virtual. Um, we have another fish class. Oh, we're doing a fall soup class. Um, so, and we always welcome recommendations or suggestions for um, other types of classes. And then of course we go into the fall, so that's holiday and um, Thanksgiving and holidays and things like that. So anyway, without further ado, we'll start with our first thing, which is the raspberry crumble bars. And right now that's the only thing, if you did all your pre, your mise en place, that's the only thing that we have to put in the um, oven this evening. So again, it should be on 350. You'll want to get your food processor out ready. So I have this Cuisinart, I don't even know how old it is. It's probably a good 15 years old, but you know what, it, it works wonderfully. So um, in my food processor, um, and you can even use, if you needed to, you don't have, if you don't have a food processor, you can just mix all of these um, ingredients in a bowl. You know, you won't have the oat, the ground oats, um, they'll be a little bit more solid, but if you have a small little um, prep, you could always just do the oats in a small prep, or if you don't have either of those things, you can always, now you can purchase oat flour. So um, that is a great um, substitute as well. So in my food processor, I have my oats, I have my brown sugar, I have um, a little bit of all purpose flour, baking soda and some, I mean, baking powder, sorry, baking powder. You don't want to switch them up, especially if ever you've made cookies and you've switched them, you get a completely different um, texture of cookie. It's either fluffy or it's flat and crisp, um, like a cracker almost. And then a little bit of cinnamon. Now I've gone ahead and already cut into cubes my two sticks of butter. Um, you can certainly go ahead and, and do that now, or you can do that when we add it in. But the first thing we're going to do is just pulse our, our ingredients just to break up that, um, the oatmeal. I guess we need to lock it in. And you just want to pulse until the oats are ground down a little bit. I'm going to give it a couple more pulses. Perfect. And again, this is just the dry ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and get my cubed butter. I just cut my stick right down the middle and then I make smaller little cubes. And you should have, should have two sticks of that. And I cut it right in the wrapper. So I just open up the wrapper flat and then I um, cut it right in the wrapper. Put one stick in there and kind of toss it around, sprinkle it around. And then I'm going to put the other stick again that's broken up through the top two. So now I'm just going to add the second stick just right to the top. Let's see how it is. And if it seems 
really dry, you can certainly mm -hmm. add a little bit of water. Get her on. Oh, so the view? Up here, okay. Change the speaker view. So I can press my, I don't need any water. I can take a small handful of the dough and form it together. Now we're not using all of the dough right now. What we're making is we're going to uh, pre-bake the bottom of, we're gonna pre-bake the crust. Now my one word of caution is you may want to dump this into another bowl or into a larger bowl um, because trying to put your hand in here when the blade is still in here is dangerous. So I always say if you're making a sauce, if you're uh, making a pesto or something, take out the blade before you dump it out. It could just be very dangerous. And we don't need any extra, you know, protein in our dish. So I just gently nudge that. Right into a bowl. So now I'm going to take about a third of this, just enough. And you, again, you should be able to form it into a, a ball or a bowl. Uh, um, it should all come together. If it doesn't, add a couple tablespoons of water. And again, we're just gonna take about a third of this. What I like to do is sprinkle it over and then press it down. Now you can use a spatula, you can use your hands. And we're only, you know, I say about a third. Not a third cup, just a third of the entire mixture. And this will give you a nice base. Just enough to cover the bottom. And then I am just going to press it down with my hands. Now, again, you can absolutely press it down with a spatula. If you have, say, a nonstick spatula. This way you're not getting your hands kind of buttery and greasy or just buttery, I should say. So I'm just pressing this down. You know, you can always fill in if there are any little cracks or holes, add a little bit more of your crust. And the parchment will also enable you to lift it out. Now you can go ahead, put that in the oven for about 10 minutes. We're just going to par bake the bottom first before we add those berries. And while it's in the oven, we'll go ahead and we'll um, make our berry mixture. Now this class is for all of you who are watching or cooking along with me. So if I happen to go too fast, um, or if you want me to repeat something, please feel free to unmute and just say, can you give me five minutes? I, I can't see all of you um, on one screen. So um, again, just feel free to unmute um, and just say, hey, you know, can you give me five minutes or can you repeat um, or uh, repeat what you just said or the technique that you just did. So I have my fresh raspberries, which I tell you for the longest time, I was, I was offering all of these desserts with fresh raspberries and I could not find fresh raspberries anywhere. I mean, and they almost like they just didn't exist. Um, fortunately, I think maybe they're back in the store. So I was able to find some fresh raspberries I gave, you know, a great way to preserve those fresh berries because there's nothing worse than buying fresh berries 
and getting them home, letting them sit in the refrigerator for a day. You go to take them out and there's one that has molded and has molded the rest of the bottom of the little container. Uh, so what you'll want to do is when you first get them home, um, take them out of that clam shell and just give them a toss in some water. I even saw something where they added a little vinegar to the water, but just give them some a toss in some water, let them dry. I know it sounds like a process, but you know, toss them, let them air dry, um, spread out on maybe a baking sheet or something. And then you can put them into your own little um, container. You know, now they make those little um, Rubbermaid or Tupperware containers that have little trays in them that kind of circulates the air. Um, so it, it's hard, you know, berries are not inexpensive and uh, you know, you want to have some nice, nice fruit. So you'll need your berries and I'm sprinkling in my brown sugar. This also has a little bit, just a couple of tablespoons of AP flour. And this we're just going to toss or almost macerate our berries. Um, this is great for baking also because we're adding a little bit of flour, which acts like a thickener. And we're just gonna toss those all together. I gotta break up my brown sugar. Definitely needs to be just broken up just a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna gently toss that. And I'm going to go ahead and add my vanilla. So two teaspoons of vanilla. I, I grew up in New Hampshire and um, we are very, very close to King Arthur Flour or King Arthur Baking Company in Norwich, Vermont. Um, so I splurged and we were just up there in August and I got the Fiori de, Fiori di Sicilia, which is a citrus almost a lemon scented vanilla extract. It's just transports you to the, you know, to Sicily. And don't we all wanna just be transported to Sicily right now? So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that. It's got a little bit of citrus to it. And then we want about two teaspoons of lemon zest. Now, if you, this is, a, this is actually a, an authentic microplane zester, which has definitely been used a lot. I've got some cracks in the handle. And uh, you know when microplane first came out, they were just one piece. They looked exactly like a wood rasp, which was the inventor's uh, inspiration, was her husband's wood rasp. So these are perfect. Many other companies make a microplane zester or a zester. If you don't have one of these, you can certainly use, if you have something a little with a little bit larger teeth, like a cheese grater, you can certainly use that. You'll just get bigger zest. Um, or you can, if you don't have either of those, you can actually just use a vegetable peeler and gently peel the top um, layer off that nice yellow, yellow layer off that has all those essential oils in there and chop it up fine. And that will give you the exact same thing. Now for today's class, we want to save our lemon after we zest it because we're going to need it for our green goddess dressing. Um, but I always say you want to zest before you juice. It's really difficult to try and get the lemon zest off of um, a, an already juiced a piece of citrus, a lemon, a lime, an orange. It's really good. And this is definitely going to make the house smell so nice. It's so fresh and it just really brightens the flavors of your berries. And I, I made a couple of changes or adjustments on my, um, on my version because I bought one peach. I figured, you know, I don't, I don't need a lot of peaches. Um, 
I bought one peach for this dessert. And wouldn't you know it, the one peach, it was just brown all the way through. On the outside, no clue. Beautiful peach. On the inside, brown. So I have some plums at home. So I just thinly sliced a plum. You could dollop peach jam. If you have some peach preserves, you can do a little bit of jam and a little bit of um, preserves. So you don't have to um, always go with exactly what the recipe says. You can be creative. You know, recipes, other than maybe, you know, the base, your crust, your crumble, um, which is measured ingredients and it has it has chemical reactions, right? We have the baking powder. Um, so we have things that are going to be reactive. But when it comes to the fruits, you know, you can certainly be um, creative and use this recipe as a guide, but make it your own. All right, so I have three minutes left. I am going to let... Um, so we've added the berries, the brown sugar, a little bit of flour, your vanilla extract, some lemon zest, and then we're going to save the raspberry jam because when our crust comes out, we are going to dollop our jam um, atop our crust. We're going to add our um, sliced fruit, whatever your fruit may be, a peach, a nectarine, a plum, a pluot, uh, and then we're going to Spoon the berries over the top, dollop with the jam, add the slices, and then sprinkle the remaining crumbs. So of course you do not want to get rid of those um, crumbs. So I have about two minutes left and I'm gonna let these sit for just those couple of minutes. If you need to go ahead and slice up your peach, um, get out your jam. I'm actually using a mixed berry jam because that's what I have. Um, that's what I have here um, at home. So you could use, I mean, this would be really great with a blackberry jam. Um, it would be delicious with, you know, even if, you, if you're one of those people that like um, orange marmalade, peach preserves. So you can certainly, you don't want to, the thing with the berries is that if you don't want to use straw, strawberries tend to be very watery. So you want something that's a little bit more solid, like a blackberry, a raspberry um, for these bars. But these are great bars. They freeze really well. Um, and they're just perfect, you know, to put in a lunchbox or in a pic picnic basket. So those are really, really nice. Um, I will say I have less than a minute left, so we'll just go on for that. Uh, we'll just wait for that. Um, our next recipe that we're going to put together while these while this is baking in the oven is the um, chicken curry salad. So hopefully, if you're cooking along, you've already um, taken the chicken off of the bone of a rotisserie chicken. But now you can even buy the chicken, just the pulled chicken. Um, I like to use in my chicken salad. I use a mixture of the light and the dark meat, a little bit heavier on the dark meat. And you can buy the roasted chicken leg quarters that you can just, you know, take the chicken off um, of the bone yourself. I just think it just gives it a little, uh, it's a little juicier, a little bit more richness uh, using a lot of the dark meat. All right. My crust is done and it should just be a very, very pale blonde. We're not looking for it to be completely cooked because we have a lot of things that we need to put on top of it. So again, mine's just a really nice pale blonde, almost like a shortbread. It should look like a shortbread cookie. Okay, so do not shut off your oven. We will need to uh, put this back in and let it bake, but it will make your house smell wonderful. So I have this nice um, par baked crust, right? So again, it looks like shortbread. It's very, very blonde. So I have my mixture of berries here, which at this point, they are not whole anymore. Mine are sort of smashed berries. So, now you'll just wanna spoon these pretty much in an even layer. 
you know, try and spread it out from corner, edge to edge, corner to corner. You know, there's nothing worse than taking a piece of a raspberry bar and, you know, all the raspberry filling is on, on the next piece. It's not on that piece. So do what you can to try and, you know, spread this out. And it's okay, it doesn't have to be a super thick layer. But do what you can to really get that spread across the whole. These are also really great to bring to someone's house. You know, you don't, um, you can make them a day ahead. Again, they freeze really well. Oh, it smells so good. All right. I am going to get myself a spatula because I do have a little bit on the bottom of my bowl and I am going to give it a light smash. Just to try and get those corners. Okay, now you can get out your jam. And we're just gonna give little dollops all around. So let's see, this is 17 ounces, half a cup is four ounces. So we're just gonna give some little dollops. And then once you give it the dollops, get out that spatula and try and spread it in an even layer. And if any of you are a little bit ahead of me, you're, once we dollop the jam, we're gonna spread it out in that layer. And then we are going to layer our peach or fruit. I should just say fruit slices on top. If you don't have fruit slices, but maybe you have some more fresh berries, you can certainly add those. Take that spatula. And don't forget your pan is hot, so. I know that I have that, that urge to hold on to the side. Just grab your side towel. And it's all right if it comes over the side a little. Add a little bit more jam if you see some spots that could really use it. Ooh, and in cooler weather, this is great with a cup of tea. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and add my plum slices. And then you add the rest of the dough, the rest of the crumble. Christine, we have a quick, why add the jam to the berries ahead of time, John asks. I would think that it would make a smoother sauce is what he says. And that probably will. And you're just saving yourself a step. I don't think it, you can certainly go ahead and do that. And you're right, it does save a step and it would make it a little bit smoother because this is not a layered bar. So once it's baked, you're not gonna see the different um, layers. I'd say that that is, 
That is a very good edit to the recipe. So yes, that would, that does make sense. That does make sense. All right, I guess I needed a little bit more plums. Well, I'll just do one side with plums. And then we'll do one side naked. There we go. Yeah, that wouldn't make a lot of sense. Good question. The motto these days is to work smart, not hard. So that is a great shortcut. Now you just take the rest of your crumbs and I still like to gather it together and then break it up just so that I have some bigger crumbs. And I start at the edge and I go low. Remember your pan is still hot. And you really want to make sure that your mixture is covered. Because these berries will get very juicy and may bubble a little bit, which is fine. It'll break through the top crumb. getting all the little pieces for the edge. There we go. A little bit of my food processor, there we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes. Now my home oven is a conventional oven. So I do need to, it has hot spots. It's not that old, not that young, but it has hot spots. So I need to turn, oh, it's probably about eight years old. Um, so I do turn mine halfway through the cooking uh, process. So if you have one of those finicky ovens and, you, and you've often noticed that the back or one side uh, seems to cook a little quicker than the other. I just set my cook time for half of the amount and then it reminds me to turn around my pan. So I'm just gonna set my timer for 15 and then hit start. And it will be a nice golden brown. As I said, the berries will get juicy and start to burst a little bit. So that is delicious. All right, I'll give those that are cooking along with me a couple of minutes to put some things aside. And as I said, the next thing we're gonna do is, is very quick um, is our curry chicken salad, which is definitely one of my, favorite um, chicken salads. And this you can, you can eat in a lettuce cup if you're trying to go, you know, watch your carbs and trying to go gluten-free. Um, I'll show you here, I have a hamburger bun that, um, so that I can show you the technique if you do have a ciabatta loaf, or if you have maybe a French loaf or an Italian loaf, um, how we kind of want to make a little tunnel for our chicken salad to go in. I like it just with some uh, like chicken salad and some flat pretzels or a piece of pita, almost like you would eat a tuna salad. So that's how I like to enjoy mine. So for our curry chicken salad, I'll go through all of the ingredients and then we can prepare it together and try it together, right? Uh, so I have my shredded chicken. Um, again, this is mostly dark meat with a little bit of white meat in there. Uh, so I have my shredded chicken. And I, I tell you, I really like to use, well, there's nothing better than a rotisserie chicken. 
because it gives you so many options of things that you can do with it. Not only a chicken salad, not only some roasted chicken at dinner, but stock, um, soup. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on of what you can do with a with one rotisserie chicken. Uh, you know, de you'll definitely often want to save the bones. Some mayonnaise. You know, even though I grew up in New England and grew up eating Hellman's, using Hellman's. You know, now in Virginia, so I got to use the Dukes. Um, and I often use the Dukes either with olive oil, and I've also tried the Dukes with avocado oil, and that's really great too. So some Dukes. Some mango chutney. I believe I got this from Trader Joe's. This is a mango ginger chutney. Um, you can often find the mango chutney. Um, there's a great uh, braise mango chutney. Um, you can find it in the Asian and Indian section in most grocery stores. Of course, you could definitely find it in any of your international markets, whether it's um, an Indian market or an international market. Um, there's a great one off of Midlothian called New Brand. Uh, blue plate is superior. Where is that out of? Oh. And it's amazing how regional mayonnaise can be. Um, I mean, I had neighbors growing up and I still, it's a, it's a memory that will never go away. One of my friends in the neighborhood, her mom would make us bologna sandwiches on Wonder Bread with Miracle Whip. And I am not a fan of Miracle I know people who love, I think Miracle Whip is a love or hate. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what that is. It's so tangy. And then her mom would eat the sandwich with a diet tab. I don't even know if they make tab anymore. Um, but that's also kind of uh, showing my age too. But anyway, this um, mango chutney, this is great. This is delicious. If you need a last minute, if, if you have friends coming over, friends from your pod coming over and you need a last minute um, snack, some of this mango chutney over a block of cream cheese and you scoop it together. Oh, it's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. And it's so simple. People think that it's very, very fancy. Um, so this is just some mango chutney some golden raisins or currants. I have some golden raisins here. So I have my golden, good old um, sun-made golden raisins. I have my sliced almonds. Now, if you're not an almond fan, but maybe you like pistachios or you could put walnuts in here if you wanted to. These are just some nice um, slivered almonds. Then of course I have our scallions or green onions and I just sliced those thin. Um, I took off the nubby ends. So you have your root end that I trimmed off. And then you have the end of the green, which sometimes can get a little frayed. Um, just trim that off and then use the whole thing. Use the rest of it, as well as our curry powder. And this is some Madras curry powder. Um, and curry is curry, just like um, your um, garam masala is really a mix of spices and ingredients. Um, and curry can mean a different blend to different regions. Uh, this is a nice Madras Indian curry that I have here, which is mm, so, so fragrant. Um, and this is four tablespoons. So really what we're gonna do, super, super simple. You know, first I have my chicken. Oh, I will show you the bread part. So what I meant, when I gave the description of how to make the baguette or take out the baguette, you know, what you'll want to do, this is, we'll say that this is a baguette, um, but just scoop out some of the bread to give yourself a little cup, right? To give yourself almost, and if you're using a baguette and cutting it up maybe for a, a picnic, um, you'll wanna scoop it out so that there's a little tunnel. You know, you wanna leave an edge around it. And you can do the same thing with the top because that means you can mound a little bit more filling. There's nothing worse than getting a really 
lovely artisanal, you know, sandwich at a specialty cafe and it's three quarters bread and the rest is, you know, barely, you can barely see it. So really you wanna get, we're not eating bread with a little bit of curry salad. You want some curry salad that's nestled in some bread. So you can do the same thing with the top. And that way you can get, put a big scoop right inside. So if you're using sub rolls, hero rolls, the, the ciabattas, um, a nice semolina, you know, just make a little pocket in there for that. And those you can just save as well too. All right, so I have the chicken. Now we're just gonna add the rest of the ingredients. So I will save a little bit of the greens of the chopped scallions just to garnish the top. But in the meantime, I'm going to add my golden raisins. Now we need one cup of mayonnaise and I'm going to um, guesstimate my one, one cup you can certainly measure it out. There's one cup, about half a cup of your mango chutney, which this is a nine ounce jar, a half a cup. One cup is eight ounces, half a cup is four ounces. So this has already been used a little bit. So I will use a little bit. One and a half. Oh, and this has some Mm, peppers in it, and it's a little bit sweet, and it's a little bit spicy. Just really, really delicious. So now that I have my wet ingredients, I'm going to mix those. I'm going to add my almonds. Again, I'll save a little bit for garnish. I'll add my almonds. Same thing with my green, my green onions or my scallions. I'll add a little bit of those and save a little bit for the top. Give that a mix. And I'm going to sprinkle my curry powder. I don't want to dump it in. I want to sprinkle it over the top. You know, just give it a nice sprinkle. You know, no one wants to take a bite of something that is a, a pocket of just curry seasoning. Now the key when you are cooking at home, even if it's just for yourself, taste, 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 taste. Certain, there are certain things that you really have to watch out for. I don't recommend that you make this in a white bowl. Um, the curry powder may stain it a little bit. So what I always recommend is that you taste. Certain, as I was saying, Certain things like salt, um, heat, so hot sauce, hot pepper, and acid. Those are the things that if you put too much in, you cannot take it out. You, if you put, if ever you've eaten anything that maybe you or someone else accidentally put too much salt in, or even at a restaurant and they had too much salt, that, that's it. You know, you really just can't fix it. So let's try. Mm. Now this, I might add a pinch of salt, but the chutney, mm, oh my goodness. It has a nice little kick. There is a little kick to it. So I will tell you that. But again, if you have it on some bread, it's going to cut down on that kick. Oh, but you have the sweetness. You have the sweetness from the raisins, right? And the chutney. The chutney is sweet with some spicy notes to it. The mayonnaise helps calm it down just a little bit. Oh, yeah. And I love that mango chutney. So I am going to plate up one sandwich just so you can see. So I have my 
roll that I have taken out some of the bread. I need to take out just a little bit more of the bread. Then I'm going to dollop. Again, taste for seasoning. This is the salad is for you. So you add what tastes how much salt, how much pepper you want, but always, always taste and always err on the side. You can always add a little bit more salt. I like to use here at home, I use a, and at work, we use a kosher salt, a coarse kosher salt or sea salt uh, because the granules are bigger. You're actually not taking as much. So you're using less, but you're still getting that salty flavor and taste that you want. I find that the table salt, the very, very fine iodized table salt is perfect for baking. Great for baking because you're using so little, but it comes out so fast and it's so fine that it's very easy to over salt your um, food, whatever it is that you're making. And I did not make this very pretty. All right, so I'm going to add the curry on the roll. I am going to garnish with a little extra almonds. I'm going to garnish with a little extra greens. I'm going to clean up my plate because that is just not attractive. That. And then the top, as I said, is also hollowed out a little bit. Put the bun, put the top right on there. Give it a nice slice. This way you can see. So there you have it. So I cut it in half. So you can see how cutting out some of the bread makes a difference. You have a nice, you know, inch of chicken salad in there. Um, so this is a good hearty sandwich. You could put this in a wrap. Oh, I really like to put this in a wrap or in a pita um, with some greens, some really nice greens. That's delicious too. So. And honestly, the next day, this salad, the flavors just get to sit for a little bit. And it's just delicious. So I hope you all enjoy it. Oh, I know you can eat it with a fork. I have, I try and just eat it myself with some crackers. <laughs> so I'll put it in a small little plate like this, a small little uh, square and just, you know, have it as a snack. But it's a great alternative to your regular chicken salad. Um, I will tell you that I love um, I love the Ucrops tarragon chicken salad, or sometimes I will get the salad with the grapes and the almonds in there. I love it, but it is expensive. So you can make you can use a whole rotisserie chicken and all of these ingredients and make probably three times the amount for a fraction of that cost. So that's also something to, to keep in mind. All right, so I am just starting to see my dessert, my raspberry crumb bars, they are at their halfway point. So it's still not brown, but it is starting to bubble along the side. And it smells fantastic. So I'm going to keep those in there. Whenever I'm baking, and I am a recipe follower when it comes to baking, my degree is in the culinary arts. Yes, we had a small little stint in pastry, but um, I'm very much a, a quick bread person or a bar person or a cookie person when it comes to cakes and eclairs and petty fours and even chocolates and milfoys, I leave that to the professionals. Uh, 
So when I'm baking, I usually set my timer for the least amount of suggested time and then take a look at it. I'd rather it be a little underdone and able to give myself two, five more minutes than have it be overcooked or overdone or burned. We don't want burned. Yeah, so this chicken curry chicken salad is just delicious. And again, feel free to adjust any of those flavors. Um, you know, if, if you're not a, a huge curry fan, you know, you can cut back a little bit on the curry, but I think the mango chutney really makes the dish. I think that really, really makes the dish. Um, and it's just a really delicious condiment to have um, in your refrigerator. That's probably one thing that you would notice if, you know, if you are a foodie, or you have friends that are big foodies is that usually there's a lot of condiments in the house. All different types in the whole door of the refrigerator is a variety of condiments from pestos to chutneys to um, hot sauce and salsas and things like that. So yeah, can be, can be a little, a little much. Rubs, spice rubs, I have a whole bunch of those. It's hard to pass them up sometimes when you see them in the store. They look so creative that you think, oh, I've got to try that. Okay, now our next dish are the Buddha bowls in a jar. You know, these jarred salads. Now I am going to tell you that if you, if you want this, if you want to have the salad tomorrow, you may want to keep the dressing um, on the side, you may want to put that in the top tomorrow um, or the next day. Tomorrow, you, if you're gonna just take it with you tomorrow, you can definitely put the dressing in the bottom. I think that's fine, one day is fine. But if it's going to be in the refrigerator for more than one day, um, you may want to just make the salad and keep the dressing um, on the side in a separate little container and bring that along with you. But of course, this dressing is great with vegetables, um, raw vegetables, cooked vegetables, it really doesn't matter. It does not matter at all. So for, we're going to do the green goddess dressing for a harvest salad in the jar. So for those of you that are cooking along, um, I did suggest that you, all that you go ahead and you roast off your butternut squash, your apples and your chickpeas all together. So that's three cups, and this is to make six jars. So make it to how many you want to, to make. So when I, wrote, when I went to the farmer's market, I went out to the Goochland farmer's market Tuesday, and Little Green Acres had these tiny, these precious little honey butternut squashes. I mean, this would be a perfect first course. You know, you could just cut them in half. They're, just a, they're so sweet they're really nice and sweet so when it's something this small eat, if it's a large butternut squash what I do is I cut off the I cut the bulb off of the um, the rest of the neck of the squash to give myself a flat surface if it's a large butternut squash I use a knife and I go around the outside to peel it I peel it first, then I'll scoop out the seeds and cube it. I do suggest that for, for most recipes, if, if cutting something this, and this can be tricky because the skin is very tough. If this is difficult for you to do, or you just don't want to do it, I suggest buying frozen chopped butternut squash versus you can certainly buy the pre-chopped bags of the butternut squash, and they have it for the sweet potatoes too. You can get it pre-chopped. My only issue with any of that is that it's expensive and it's very perishable. And oftentimes you'll get one or two pieces that are a little slimy um, and they're really weird shape. They're not a nice cut. So, 
It's a lot more economical to get frozen chopped butternut squash or sweet potatoes, which you can absolutely substitute the squash for using some sweet potatoes. Um, then you can just thaw and use what you need. And again, it's a lot more cost effective. Those pre-bagged, pre-chopped vegetables are extremely perishable, especially onions. You know, the onions that you see in the refrigerated section, um, just buy a bag of frozen chopped onions and use what you need. It's fresh, it's frozen, and it's a lot more economical. Um, and, you know, you just use what you need. You can keep the rest in your freezer so it won't go bad or take up a lot of room. So I chopped up these lovely little um, butternut squashes. I just think they are so cute and easy to roast. So I already made my, I have my roasted vegetables here. So I have my chickpeas. I have my apples, which I kept the skin on. That's where all the fiber is. And that's completely up to you. If you want to uh, keep the skin on or peel them, as long as you, you know, wash the apples, you know, that's, a, it's a lot of fiber. And so that's what we want in this harvest Buddha bowl. Um, so I have my roasted chickpeas, I have my apples and I have my butternut squash. We mix those with a little bit of salt and pepper, um, a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg and a little bit of maple syrup. And that just kind of kicks up the sweetness a little bit as well. I have my quinoa already made here. Now, if you don't have pepitas or pumpkin seeds, these are the whole pumpkin seeds, not the white big pumpkin seeds. This is what's inside the pumpkin seed. Um, these are delicious, but you can sprinkle any, you know, if you want to use more of the slivered almonds, you can use that on top. This is just a little added crunch. They're very, very tasty. Um, they're great toasted. Um, they're great with any type of Latin American food. You can make a nice pesto out of the pepitas as well too. All right. So now that we have, I have my quinoa made, um, I have my jars and I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of these, but we'll make the green goddess dressing together. So I'm using a little prep a little mini chopper that I believe, I, I think I purchased this little mini chopper at Aldi. Um, we also do for larger groups where mise en place cannot accommodate everybody. We partner with uh, Blue Bee Cider and with Virago Spirits where um, we do a cooking and, I shouldn't say cooking and drinking, but you get to enjoy um, either the Blue Bee Ciders or some of the Virago cocktails along with your cooking class. Uh, and there are times when we may not have all of the equipment that we need. So we need to make a quick beeline. The closest store really is Aldi. So um, they have these cute little mini choppers and this is perfect. But of course you can use um, your food processor, just rinse it out and use your food processor. And this is a really simple dressing. And this is a dressing that will um, that you'll want to keep. You can keep in you can keep in another ball jar. You can keep in any type of you know nice glass container in your refrigerator. So this has I know I put it in here somewhere. So we have our we just need one garlic clove peeled. I smashed mine down a little bit. just to make it easier in the blender. And then here I have a mix of basil, the last of the basil from my garden, some parsley, which we had a uh, yellowtail, like yellowtail? Um, we had a caterpillar that's gonna turn into a butterfly on some of the parsley, so we left that alone. But I have some fresh parsley, I have chives, I have some scallions, some more green onions, uh, basil, all that in there. Then we're going to add an avocado. But I'll show you that too. An easy way to get that avocado pit out and it does not involve a knife. So there's that. Now in my measuring cup, I have olive oil and my water. I have olive oil, 
water and your couple of tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Now, if you don't have apple cider vinegar, you can use red wine vinegar, you can use white wine vinegar. I probably would not use a balsamic vinegar. Um, it's just so dark. It's just so very, very dark. Now we will need the juice of one medium lemon. So remember with our raspberry bars, we use the zest from one lemon. So now I'm going to use the juice. So you'll just want to, I like to give my lemon just a little roll, just to kind of break up all of the membranes to get out some really good juice. Cut that in half. I have this cute little, I think this is actually from Ikea. I have this cute little reamer. Doesn't take up a lot of room. Works great. If you have a garbage disposal, we all love putting the lemons down the, the use lemons down the garbage disposal. Christine, can you give us a an alternative dressing for this? Uh, we have a we have a customer who's not crazy about avocado. Can you give us an alternative dressing that will work with the salad? Thank you. Sure, of course, absolutely. You know, you could make this salad without the avocado. I would maybe add. You want something to help make it creamy, so you can certainly add a little bit of mayonnaise, maybe about a quarter cup of mayonnaise. And that way you'll get um, more of a, definitely more of a true green goddess, which often has a little bit of mayonnaise and sour cream. So you could do maybe a quarter cup of mayonnaise and a tablespoon of sour cream to give that nice creamy, since we're adding the lemon juice, it'll be that buttermilk kind of consistency tang to it as well too. So you can certainly substitute, um, mayonnaise or sour cream for the avocado. Now, if you have a favorite salad dressing, um, I probably would not use a Caesar, but I would, you could definitely make a balsamic with mustard, something again to emulsify it, but I love the really herbiness of it. So if you wanted to make this exact, this really herby, earthy um, salad dressing, just substitute the mayo and a little bit of sour cream or just mayo for the avocado. Um, the avocado is just our mayo substitute. Uh, or you could, you know, we have the olive oil in here. Uh, you could just not have any mayo in there at all. Um, but if you have a favorite vinaigrette, uh, you know, even Italian would be nice in here. Or if you're a big ranch person, um, you know, you can, it's very easy to make a, your, a homemade ranch um, dressing. So you do have a lot of options. And again, this is just a suggestion for this because it's very, our bootable is very earthy with all those root vegetables in there. Um, who makes, I recently got a salad dressing, which would probably be so delicious. This is in the Virginia Made section. It is the Virginia brand Vidalia Onion Vinaigrette. Now this would probably be delicious in that bowl. So if you didn't want to make a dressing, you could use your favorite, you know, dressing. But this is a dressing marinade and dip. I wanted to try it. It was Virginia Made, so, but this is really good. It's really good on steak too. So I hope I gave you some options, a lot of options. So for the avocado, here is my tip on cutting an avocado. And for this, we just need one medium avocado. I think is that, is that how, what I say, how much it is? One and a half small or one leap. So I cut it, I take my knife and I curl my hands, tuck that thumb in, and I, I'm right at the top and I cut down until I feel the pit. And then I just move my knife all around unless it comes off on its own, which it's doing right now. There you go. So it separates. I have two halves, one with the pit, one without. I am just going to literally smush the avocado since we're blending it right into my processor. 
Now, yes, you can scoop it with a spoon. That's fine too. But I'm just going to smoosh it out. Now for the pit. I don't know what I saw this on some sort of social media post, but it does work. You take your forefinger and your middle finger on either edge of your avocado. You take your thumb on the opposite end of the pit, right behind the pit, and you just gently push the pit out with your thumb. Boom, done. No need to take the knife and try and cut into the pit and turn it, you just push it out. So again, forefinger and middle finger, and then your thumb right behind the pit and just gently pop it out. A lot safer. Because sometimes you just never know if that pit is soft. And if you haven't done it a lot, you know, you could easily just go right through. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want that to happen. So I have my olive oil, my water, and my apple cider vinegar. Put that in there. And I'm going to have, this is a lot of lemon juice. So I ended up having two ounces of lemon juice. I'm just gonna pour half of that in, blend it and see how I like it. But I do hear my raspberry bars. There we go. And then we'll try it. Let's see. Oh, it smells so good. So, so good. So I'm gonna digress and show my raspberry bars. Now these are still just a little light for me. I'm gonna put them in there for five minutes and then I'm gonna shut it off. I want just a, I want the top to be a little bit more golden. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and blend up my, I'm just gonna add a pinch of salt and I'm going to blend my dressing. You want to blend it until it's nice and creamy, which this looks super creamy. Always taste, you always want to taste. Oh, it's nice and lemony. Mine needs some pepper though. Mine needs some serious pepper. And I only added one avocado. I need to add another avocado in there. I'm gonna go ahead, I have another avocado. So I'll do another demo. My one small avocado did not cut it. So again, I have the half that does not have a pit in it. I'm just gonna squeeze that out. There we go. Now here again, the one that does have the pit. Thumb in the back, behind the pit, forefinger and middle finger on either side, a gentle push, and there it is. I may even add a little bit of, could use a little bit of heat. So I may even add a little bit of crushed red pepper. Or if you're a hot sauce fan, you could add a little bit of hot sauce.
All right, now let's try. Oh, this is the consistency I want. I'm not looking for guacamole, but I want a nice, thick, creamy, almost like the consistency of a blue cheese dressing. Yeah, that's good with the cider. I still need more pepper though. I'm gonna try to add a little bit of, I have some crushed pepper from Turkey that I'm gonna add in there. Now I'm just gonna let it sit in there while we build. All right, now that it's all done, make sure you get your jars ready. So I have my ball jars here. Um, you can use these jars and now you can also buy them with just regular twist on lids, not the uh, like jelly jar lids that have the two pieces, but you can get just white screw top lids, which is really, really nice. Here in our house, we use a lot of the jelly jars for um, just regular glasses, uh, drinking glasses. So I have all of, I have my, I used a tri-colored couscous, I mean a tri-colored uh, quinoa. So I have my quinoa here. I cooked off some, I didn't cook off kale, I cooked off spinach. And it actually came out really nice. You can top it with fresh spinach. You don't have to cook. If you're gonna use kale, cook it. Because raw kale without any dressing is like chewing leather. Um, but um, you could use fresh spinach on top if you wanted to. All right, so the first layer in building these jars, and these I will have, tomorrow at lunch and maybe make one for a friend. Um, so I'm gonna take a good dollop of the dressing. So two tablespoons. So I'm gonna put two nice dollops. And we're just gonna build these together. So we have the, then we're going to add our squash mixture. Now I made plenty of, I made the recipe amount for the um, squash, apples and chickpeas. One, I love to use this as a side dish. This is great if you're gonna just do some uh, pan uh, roasted chicken. If you're just gonna do some chicken cutlets and you need a nice side, this is great. Again, you could just toss this with some of the quinoa if you want to. I'm just gonna scoop that right on top. So I love this mixture. It's very fall. It's making me think of cooler temperatures because I don't want these hot temperatures anymore. I'm ready for cozy sweaters. And I'll just keep on wearing my cozy pants. All right, so we got those nice and filled up. Then we'll take our quinoa. We're just going to top that. Some quinoa. You know, in all of these ingredients, you can keep separate if you wanted to 
you know, have them, if you want to do all the prep ahead of time. So you can absolutely cook, roast off all the vegetables with the apples and the chickpeas ahead of time, store that in a container. You can make um, the quinoa, and, you know, you can, quinoa is very easy to make, but you know, if you are running short on time, but you wanna build these bowls, you can buy that frozen too. It doesn't taste the same, but it's great in a pinch. All right, so I have that layer there. Now I'm gonna to top with my crunchy spinach. And I'm just gonna put that on top. And you could certainly use just some fresh spinach, some nice greens in there. We already have all the herbs. This just gives it a little bit of crunch. If you are someone who likes the roasted seaweed strips, you could put that on top. Now I'm gonna take my little pumpkin seeds, which again are absolutely delicious. And if you like pumpkin seeds, you can even blend that in with your dressing. But the pepitas or the pumpkin seeds, you can use any nut that you like, but this does add a little bit of crunch and it's a delicious pesto. It does make a really good pesto. So there you have it. Now you're thinking, okay, well, what are we supposed to do? Like, how do we eat it? What are you supposed to do? So you can try and shake it, but it's not gonna shake that well. Just take your fork, and gently toss it, gently toss it in there um, so that the dressing gets on top of all of your delicious, you know, vegetables and that are sweet and roasted. So all your seasonings in here, um, you have your quinoa. I mean, this is a healthy, a healthy, healthy bowl. You could add, um, if you didn't want quinoa, but maybe you wanted a little bit of couscous, um, you could add couscous, a little bit of pasta on here if you wanted to. You know, you really have a lot of options with layering, um, but this is just, it's really healthy. This one is a great gluten-free um, salad. You have so many nutrients in there between the avocado and the avocado oil and so many colors. So you have green, you have all of your herbs, you have your avocados, you have your gluten-free quinoa, um, apples, great for fiber, butternut squash, same thing. You have all that beta carotene in there. So this is definitely a plus plus. And whatever extra vegetables you have, if you're not going to eat them, your extra roasted vegetables, freeze them. Put them in a little zip top bag, lay them flat and, and freeze those, especially with fall coming up. That makes a great soup. You know, your butternut squash, add a little bit of vegetable stock. I'm gonna go ahead and put those away. Makes a great soup. Same thing with the quinoa. All right, let's see those bars. My bars are done. Let's put all this aside. One of the plus sides of doing this at home is that I have teenagers who can help me clean. They want a raspberry bar. All right, oh my goodness, the smell and the bubbling. So it's a nice, nice golden brown. So I've got a crust, uh, crispy edges and it's still bubbling. It's been off, the oven's been off for about seven minutes and it's still bubbling. So definitely let those sit. I know it's very tempting <laughs> to want to cut into it and enjoy it. Um, of course, even better with either fresh whipped cream or vanilla ice cream would be really, really nice. But these you definitely want to just let cool completely before you cut them. Because if you cut them when they're warm, it's just going to ooze all out. Your, your berries, everything that you work so hard to create this lovely, luscious layer, it's just going to get very goopy. And you don't want that. You want it to cool so that the butter cools a little bit and your crust turns crusty. Um, and it just kind of settles in a little bit. So we have our lovely, well, my son ate the curry chicken sandwich, so that is gone. But we have our amazing, actually, I'll, maybe I'll put it in a little bowl. Uh, 
we have our delicious curry, chicken curry salad. And if you don't have golden raisins, but you have regular raisins, use those. If you don't have raisins, but you have grapes, use that. Currants sometimes can be hard to find. So we have our little bit of curry salad here. Let me just move this and we'll top it off. So we have a curry salad, a little toasted almonds on top. You know, if you're gonna serve this to people for lunch, you could maybe tilt the top a little bit so that it's off sides, garnish. You know, you eat with your eyes first. So even if you're just, you know, having takeout, you know, Chinese food, put it on a plate, you know, make it look like you're at a restaurant, um, but it's in your own home. So make it look really nice for yourself. And then our salad in a jar. So we have these lovely layers and you just get that fork and mix that in there. And then you know, the cleanup is really easy too. It, you, the jar that you put in your dishwasher. So I'm not gonna cut into these bars, but We'll keep it as it is. And so that's our back to school, back to work, back to end of summer, um, you know, salads. So these are great for camping. If you're gonna go camping this fall, you know, you can make a bunch of these salads. Um, you know, if you're gonna go out on a, you know, just go kayaking or canoeing or a hike or something, you know, these, you could always make a, a vinaigrette that doesn't, well, this only has um, olive oil and this doesn't have any mayonnaise. It just has avocado. So um, you can definitely take those with you. Same thing with the curry chicken salad. You, you can eat it with some, I like to eat it with the flat pretzels um, is really good. So yeah, these are great for road trips, school, work. Um, and I know next month, um, October, it's all about apples. So we're not making the butternut squash um, and apple. I, although we may be doing a soup with butternut squash and apples, but um, it's all about apples from dessert to salad um, is next month. And then I forget what November is, but we have something else, another um, lineup of recipes for November. Does anyone have any questions or has anyone tried anything and liked it, didn't like it? We'll probably change something. Um, I just know that my house smells really good, really good right now. And I get thumbs up from mine. Uh, glass over metal. A lot of it depends, I have one of each. Um, I have one of each for most of my baking pans. I just think glass are really good conductors of heat. Not that metal isn't um, metal, especially the nonstick um, metal pans. You sometimes have to adjust your temperature a little bit because they're a little bit thinner, so they can get hotter. Oh, thank you, Patrick. Um, so I like cooking with glass, but it's really you know your preference and what you have. You know, use what you have. Don't go out and buy anything special. Um, you know, the non-stick ones, the non-stick metal ones, you definitely want to make sure that you use parchment paper. Glass is a little bit more forgiving, um, especially when you have a crust, a buttery crust. Uh, glass can be a little bit more um, forgiving. But I like to use glass, but you use, use what you have. I think the end product is pretty much the same. It doesn't affect the flavor. If anything, it just affects the baking time. 